For years I've been dying to dive into a digital card game, and with this being the first I've played since Magic the Gathering as a youngster, boy am I glad that I did. I'm the Final Fox Tim Swernick, and I reviewed Lightseekers on the Nintendo Switch. Before I received a code for this game, I was so excited to learn the basics of the game that I hopped onto the company's YouTube page, which has a great breakdown of the gameplay and suggestions on how to play each order, aka deck type, which I absolutely recommend as the in-game tutorial is quite brief and you want to have a solid foundation of the card mechanics before jumping in. While the basics are very approachable, there is a ton of depth to be explored. From a very high level, the basic gameplay of Lightseekers is playing different matches against a single opponent, either another player online or the CPU, each player having two moves per turn, which they can play or draw cards during. These cards can do so many different things from simple attacks to sustained abilities that can carry over a number of turns called buffs and defense moves like removing some of your opponent's cards or combining different cards allowing you to play combo cards, which are badass versions of regular action cards or buffs. While you can play against the CPU, you can only play Lightseekers with a network connection, even if you aren't playing another actual player, so there's no playing this game on your commute on Switch unless you have a Wi-Fi connection, which is incredibly frustrating. The progression in this game not only comes from your experience as a player, but the deck of cards that you're able to build as you unlock new cards, which can be done by leveling up your character, or as this is a free-to-play game, you can spend money to purchase booster packs of new cards, hoping to get new, better cards. Same as a traditional card game. This can be done in-game or physically, which you can scan the physical cards into your account through the Lightseekers app on your mobile phone, not on your Switch because it lacks the camera. Purchasing boosters through both avenues for this review, while it's nice to have the physical cards as a collector's item, I don't plan on playing this game in person, so I would recommend buying digitally, as you can buy order-specific booster packs, like a nature booster pack, to work specifically on my nature deck. That way I'm not getting a pack of cards that I'm not even looking for at the moment. Also, for a small bit of in-game purchasable currency, you can re-roll for a new pack of cards if you don't like the pack that you just opened. While you don't have to purchase the booster packs, it's quite fun and allows you to access better cards much faster. After you play some practice matches against the CPU, which is how you unlock each of the order's starting decks, casual mode will unlock which allows you to play other players online. After playing casual mode for a while, you'll run across a great player with a very well-built deck. You'll know when this happens because they'll have 8 buffs in play, most of which you can understand what they do, but each one intensifies the next, demolishing you as they go. I remember a very distinct moment where this happened to me and I thought, oh, so that's what this game is all about. Building a deck where the cards play off of each other most efficiently is very difficult because at the beginning you don't have the knowledge or the cards. However, working to earn more of each is incredibly satisfying. Spending the time to recycle old or unused cards, and then using that credit to purchase new ones to best fit the playstyle of that deck takes a considerable amount of time and can use an interface update, honestly, as easily viewing your equipped deck and what type each card is holistically is not possible, making it challenging to run through scenarios mentally trying to find those deadly combinations. I kept wishing that I actually did have the physical card so I could just spread them out on my table and then sort them into certain sections. Now the biggest and worst feature about the Nintendo Switch port of Lightseekers is that it has absolutely no controller support. No Joy-Cons, no Pro Controller support is currently available and you can only play touchscreen. You know, like an iPhone. The developers have informed me that they are working toward a controller solution, but there's no time frame around when we can expect it which is pretty hard to digest because having this amazing game on the big screen would be so fantastic, especially for deck building. For this reason, the footage captured for this review was played on an iPhone 7 Plus. Using the same account that is linked to my Switch, linking your accounts is actually very easy, and bouncing between my iPhone and my Switch when I wanted to utilize the bigger screen on the Switch worked incredibly well together. Unfortunately though, besides the larger screen, I couldn't find any benefits of playing Lightseekers on my Switch over my iPhone Plus. As you can only play with a network connection, anytime that you're out of Wi-Fi range, the Switch version won't do you much good. Also, the battery drains very fast playing Lightseekers on Switch, lasting a little more than an hour on full charge.
Lightseekers is one of my favorite games that I've played in the past 12 months. Playing this game for review was such a treat. Combined with the nostalgia of purchasing trading cards reminded me of buying Pokemon cards as a young buck, hoping for that rare find. It has such an addictive gameplay loop combined with strategy and the pre-planning and the deck building that I can't see myself putting this game down for a very long time. However, this is not just a review for Lightseekers the game, this is a review for the Nintendo Switch port of Lightseekers, which, besides being free, has many cons to it. The extreme battery draining gameplay, which is much more of a drain on Switch than on the iPhone, no controller support, which means you cannot play docked unless you want to try an unconventional third-party docking method, which I do not as they famously brick Switches. The only benefit to playing on Switch is the slightly larger screen, which is nice, but not utilizing the fantastic hardware to anywhere near its full potential, leaving this port with less overall functionality than the mobile version. So for now, I'm giving Lightseekers on the Nintendo Switch a 5 out of 10. If you enjoyed this video game review, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, The Flannel Fox. Follow me on Metacritic and Twitter at The Flannel Fox and on Instagram at The Flannel Fox Gamer. Be sure to follow and subscribe because the more followers and subscribers I get, the more codes I get, which means I make more videos. I'd like to thank Play Fusion for providing me with this early review copy. Thank you for watching my videos, and as always, see you next time, Switchers.